So welcome to the orientation session of public administration optional. All of are all of you Shankar students. Anybody from outside Shankar? All of you Julie, you are from outside Shankar. Arthavata, August. Okay. Julie, ah sorry Julie. All of others are all uh, May batch. All of you, Julie batch. All right. So have you all decided that you are going to take public administration or you are still, still thinking about public administration, you are still thinking, right. So what are the other options you are considering? Sociology then, literature, your background is in literature, okay. Psychology, agriculture, then literature, history, then another option is anthropology, PSIR. Uh, now my question is, will this be first style deal? So again, uh, I hope you know this place. What which is this place? Yes, this is the place you will be going once you clear the exam. It is called Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Labasna, in Masuri. You can watch a lot of YouTube videos which will keep you motivated. All the beautiful things they do there, you can watch and get motivated. What is this? You know how to read Hindi? Shilam Param Pushanam. This is the motto of Labasana. What is the meaning? Shilam Param Pushanam. Again, don't blame me for putting Hindi tag here. This is kept by them only. Character is the biggest virtue. This is the meaning. Again, just to show and you know start public administration because you are going to learn public administration here also. Because ultimately you are all going to be all going to be administrators. Like you are all studying to be administrators, you are aspiring to be administrators. So what we will do quickly before going to public administration, I will show you all the optionals. Right. And let tell you how to pick an optional. Right. Very quickly we will do this, how to, how to pick an optional. Then I will tell you the good and bad or why bad is a good optional. What all we will be discussing in public administration. The content of bad as an optional, we will discuss. Right. Now, um, how do we pick optional or before going to what like uh, first before going to this when we decide an optional how will we how how are you all decided an optional what are the logics apparte vitta ramani chechi varnu ee optional valara nalla ana you take it okay matte anti enodu varnu ee optional ana first rank all toppers are taking psir please take psir Right, this is at a certainty, you know, there is a, this is called great pine in the market. People tell a lot of things about a lot of, you know, aspects. This is how we should, as bureaucrats, future bureaucrats, your decision should not be based on great pine. Great pine means rumors in the market, right. You should have some authentic information before you pick the optionals. Right, this is the first thing I have to tell. So, I have an open mind towards all options. I will never say, Prabhat is the greatest option in the world. Please take Prabhat, I will never say this. If you have an inclination towards Prabhat and you feel like you can clear, what is the ultimate goal of studying an optional? You have to clear this exam. Okay. If you want to do a PhD in public administration, go to a university, get enrolled. Uh, we are not here to go, uh, understand everything <laughs> public administration and no, be a PhD, all these things, no. Our only goal is clearing the exam, very short, crisp, specific target. So, whichever optional you feel that will help you in clearing the exam, one thing. Second, you should have an inclination towards that optional, second thing, right. So, I will come to this point a little later also. Before that, what is the importance of this optional subject? In general, right. So, you know the weightage of uh, uh, GS marks, right. How, what is the weightage of GS marks? Right, how much, how, what is the total of GS marks? Yes, per paper is how many GS papers? How many GS papers? You know, you know, four GS papers. How many optional papers? One optional subject, two optional papers, essay. This is uh, what is grounded generally. Total marks of the written means is, written means is 1750. Right, out of 1750, 1000 is GS marks, 500 is optional marks, 250 is essay marks. Where can you score the highest marks? Where can you score the highest mark? Out of this 1000 GS marks. 
what is the to highest gen generally any aspirin we get what what is the expected range out of 1000 1000 out of 1000 how does how does this 1000 come we have four gs papers of 250 marks that is how 1000 comes right four gs 1 2 3 4 so that is how 1000 comes and how what is the maximum marks you can expect out of this 1000 1000 800 900 90% would have all passed your 10 and 12 in 90% no 90% 80% 99.9% 99 upsc what score you can expect in gs the topers marks lies between 4 say 420 to 500 500 is an extreme possibility i think i will show you that last 5 6 years topers mark only shruti sharma has scored 490 out of 1000 all the others there is a topper was scored even 420 in his gs papers Right, 420. So this GS paper pushing the marks beyond the limit is a little difficult task. Right, you can score 420, 450, 490. So the 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 possibility of pushing it beyond 500 is very difficult. Whereas an optional out of 1000, out of 500, that means here the maximum mark you can expect is somewhere around 50 percent. And what is what in the case of optional, what is the maximum mark you can expect? Current trends. Current trends. You can hit up to 300, 300. That means approximately up to 60% marks you can score in the optional subject. So optional, there is a high chance you can score more, right? Two optional papers, 150. Sorry, 250. People score 150 plus in both optionals, right? Whereas in GS, out of 250, what is considered as a good score? GS, what is a good score? Hundred, hundred to hundred and twenty-five is the maximum marks in GS. Right, one twenty-five is an extreme uh, high mark. Generally, hundred, hundred and ten are all good marks. Right. So there is an unpredictability in the GS marks. That is one issue. So you have to consider optional with utmost importance. That is one point. Second point, interview marks also is unpredictable. There are interview. There are candidates who score only 150 in the interviews. Rank one, I am telling. I am taking only rank one. They became rank one because of their optional marks, right? Especially max and all people have scored up to 330, 340. Now they are not giving this kind of marks, but there were years where people have scored 330, 340 and all. Right? Possibility. So option is again important. And then we we'll quickly go. This year's topper, Ishita Kishore. So in GS, he scored 450. Optional, sorry, three thirteen. Right, that means op GS forty five percent and optional sixty two percent. I'll quickly show these things. Last year's topper was Shruti Sharma. This is the highest score of all the toppers of the last five six years. GS she scored four ninety four. Right, forty nine point five percent optional three not six. Then two thousand twenty topper Shubham. GS four twenty four. Right. Whereas optional again 320. And 2019 public administration student was a topper. Pradeep Singh 481 in GS. Optional 293. Last year of all optionals, 300 was kind of the highest score. Kanish, this is the guy who scored 360. Max optional. Again very rarity nowadays they don't give this high marks 360. Max optional so 448 and 360 in the optionals. Again you can see the personality test mark interview 179, 158. Pradeep Singh got only 158. So this is all unpredictable, but optionals. I'll show you the Pabad optional. Don't worry. Don't think that Pabad will not get more than 300. Pabad every year somebody gets more than 300, right? Nowadays they are trying to cap. There is something called normalization in UPSC. Have you heard about it? There is something called normalization. What is normalization? All optionals will be normalized. Else, what will happen? People who write with max might be getting 500 out of 500. No humanity subject will get that max. So they will bring the marks down, and imagine one option is very difficult. Say medical science is an extreme difficult paper this year, and the top mark is 240, right? But they will boost it to so that there is a parity of optionals. There is a normalization process which goes on. That is why UPSC never gives out the main answer copies, right? They don't give out the main answer. People have filed RTA. What is RTA? Right to information. So all public bodies are brought under RTA. Somebody filed an RTA to UPSC asking for the main answer paper. They said we can't give you the main answer paper because you are not shown the actual marks. That even in GS, you are not shown the actual marks. This is what UPSC has said. Every some years, see this year, even the top scorer 
for GS three score is eighty eight. Right. This year the highest mark in GS three was one not three. That does not mean nobody has studied GS three. There is some rationalization every year. So every year some paper will be butchered, some paper will be given very high mark. So so this is a very um, relative examination. You don't have to score thousand seven fifty. You have to score better among all the aspirants. GS also you have to excel among the people who are writing the examination. So how many people write this examination? How many people write this examination? How many people apply for this examination? From where will you get the, all this information? Yes, UPSC gives reports. Annual reports are there. You can check UPSC website. So the last annual report has dealt about 2020 examination, right? So in the 2020 examination, approximately 10.5 lakh students applied. Applied. 4.8 lakh students wrote the examination. That means prelims. 4.8 lakh students wrote. How many people will clear the prelims? How many key people will clear the prelim? Yes, it depends on the vacancy, right? When the 2020 notification, I think they had only 750 or 800 vacancies, right? So I think around 11,000 students cleared the prelim, right? So out of 4.8 lakh, around 11,000 students. I'm saying only approximate numbers. Student wrote the mains. From the mains, how many students will attend the interview? Two to two point five times the number of vacancies. This is what they will call. So around two thousand, I think one hundred students attended attended the interview, and eight around eight hundred students they selected. So this is the conversion ratio. So out of four point eight lakh students who write the exam, how many people make it in the list? Point. So this conversion ratio is point one six. Right. This is the difficulty of the exam. Exam is not difficult. Exam is difficult because it is very competitive. Right, and the maximum elimination happens where here from prelims to mains only two percent aspirants are selected. Right, the public administration mulam padichalam public administration is an angle is face lattham. You have to clear the prelims. Agani exam is difficulty. If a prelims are buying it absurd, ana adin de raay prashnal prelims nanda. Right, one day hundred questions. See that they made it difficult this year. So next year probably they will make it easy. So prelims you have to clear to write the main. So the main is to interview. Interview to final conversion ratio is high, right? If it is almost 16 percent, I'll carry clear in. But I think almost 40 percent people will clear. So so attend the interview. Around 40 percent will clear, right? Eight to go to the screening. What are the prelims face now? So this this is one aspect. So every year they will butcher some GS papers. Happen so you don't have to compete with every you have to compete with this people cream right. You know the mutually and competition right. You don't have to get the best mark. If that you have to clear the cut off right. I hope you have those who have attended the or um, July batch you have already sorry May batch you have already discussed about cut off right. August batch sorry July batch when you will come we will discuss about these things. If you are not understanding certain The answer is okay. Once the class start, you'll understand. Cut off. So every year, problems are cut off, right? You only have to clear the cut off. We don't have to score 200 out of 200, right? Anyway, this is the one importance of optional, and this is the mass of few toppers. So optional is important. Now, you, do you know how many optionals are given by UPSC? How many optionals are given by UPSC? From where will we get this information? Notification every year around now February notification will come. There they will say the list of optionals. So UPSC has given 26 optionals. Right. Out of this 26 optionals, you can pick one optional. So we can maybe broadly classify this optionals into arts and science. Right. Some optionals are more science oriented. Some optionals are more arts oriented. Which which is picked more? See, if you take the percentage of people appearing for UPSC, are they more science background, arts background? From UPSC's report, around seventy five percent aspirants appearing for UPSC are from science background, are from science background. But if you take the optional, 
around 70% people 70 to 75% people six art subjects right this is the irony of upsc optional right you pick art subjects feeling that you can study it better right so this broadly you can classify and i'll quickly show you the optionals i hope you know all the things so again uh, basically you can think about the subjects you have studied in school what are the subjects you have studied in school yeah social science alla adu kaiyittala inda classification history geography then economics then ah uh, 10th in political science ok undarunno plus 1 plus 2 you have studied science no physics chemistry i think biology they are divided it into zoology and botany yes maths mathematics then computer science illa computer science illa moon engineering subjects under computer science is not there then uh, as you said if you take for plus to political science like maybe graduation level edukka you come to graduation right graduation three engineering subjects are given civil engineering now you come to degree then electrical engineering and mechanical engineering then where and the can graduation subject political political science all are psychology sociology and the prology then then commerce and accountancy um uh, management all literature subject is considered as one optional all literature subject right agriculture agriculture is one optional yes veranala ah animal husbandry right so animal husbandry and veterinary science anthropology botany chemistry civil engineering commerce accountancy then economics electrical engineering geography geology yes this is another optional geology so sub part of geography maybe we can say geology history law is there another thing you study in your college management mathematics mechanical engineering medical science again uh, course philosophy physics political science psychology public administration sociology statistics is another paper zoology literature and agriculture these are the 26 options given by upsc out of which you have to pick one optional now quickly what are the factors to be considered while selecting an optional what is the first factor you be can basically consider this um, your graduation subject is one area like if you there are certain areas you can definitely not pick right if you are an engineer you cannot definitely pick medical science if you are a doctor you cannot definitely pick engineering so there you can easily rule out certain optionals from the list of optionals you have not studied biology rule out botany and uh, zoology you have not studied and done science you can rule out all the science subjects so one aspect generally you can consider is the uh, subject you have graduation subject and second aspect is like whether you have studied law if you are a lawyer if you have studied law there is a possibility of picking law right if you have studied commerce there is a possibility of picking commerce and accountancy similarly engineering these are all subjects you generally pick if you have done the graduation these subjects now there as you said your inclination right so there are certain alternatives which will fit like i have done my masters in management right so i considered about picking management as an optional but why i did not pick management there were certain constraints for management one nobody to teach me management even though i have done masters that is not sufficient for writing upsc so i need some upsc related help so no very few people clear with the management optional so even if i have to ask what all did you do for management there is no guidance right no test series for management so there are certain aspects so there are certain pa uh, parallels you can take like law if you have studied if you feel law is a difficult optional there is a lot of things in law which you use in public administration right similarly if you have studied agriculture you don't want to pick agriculture you can go for popular optional like geography or botany botany is not popular optional medicine if you don't want to pick mb uh, medicine you can look subjects like anthropology psychology zoology etc so this is another opportunity what you have studied for your graduation 
and how you can link it with the alternate subject. So commerce and accountancy management again you can take Babad or economics. Overlap is there. Then you are liking, right? Whether you like a subject or not, and this like should see there are two. There can be two uh, things. One, I generally feel that I like the subject. There is no reason. There is no reason. I don't know why I like a subject. I like a subject. Mostly, as I said, it will be based on the grade point. Somebody told that this option is really good. I have not even read the syllabus of the subject, but I feel I like the subject. This is not the liking. Your liking should be based on certain parameters, right? You when you like an optional. Again, it is generally said that optional should be considered as your girlfriend or boyfriend because we are going to build a relationship till the time we are going to clear the examination. The example, as I said, now our daily time is spending in the subject channel optional. Daily time is spending in the end optional channel. Uh, sorry, subject channel optional. G S N A column you have to spend more time, so you have to like the subject to that extent that you feel like spending time, right? Uh, UPSC also gives this opportunity to break up with your girlfriend boyfriend. You have option to match another possibility under. But the opportunity cost would be very high. Right? In the other market, you can name, you might be able to easily replace your girlfriend boyfriend. Right? Kalyana Gaya Bolan Divorce Yam and implications on that. Even if the opportunity cost, if you study one subject and then you change the subject, you have to spend again four to five months to grab a knowledge on the subject. Right? That is the thing. So you can, you have to analyze. Basically, again, yeah, my uh, graduation is engineering, right? But I knew that I'll never grow for engineering because engineering pass out, I mean, I'm not good enough to do it. Very difficult, and that too, you have to study the entire engineering. For your uh, three engineering, they they give only three subjects, but it is very difficult to grab the whole sub thing for the main. So I was for sure that I will go for humanity subject. Out of humanities, I had a more man. I studied from management. That is why I picked public administration. This was my logic when I picked public administration. So you should have your own logic of why you are picking a subject, right? So again, there are two types of analysis. One is an objective analysis. Other is a subjective analysis. In that an objective and subjective thing. Yes, objective means it is based on facts, right? It is based on pure facts. How optional is performing. Ah, okay. If you can't understand, I am mostly going in English only. But uh, if you, if I expect all you miss something, you can tell me. Like if I am using Malayalam anywhere. So trend, how optionals are performing? So everybody is saying anthropology is the best option in the market. What is the proof that anthropology is the best option in the market? So everybody is saying so, taking sociology. They are getting good marks. Do you have any proof? That this is all rule. So there is a you can analyze the trend. How will you analyze the trend? UPSC gives us the statistics every year, as I said. Now the seventy second report of UPSC have come out in April. They give you the statistics of the exam in two thousand twenty. I'll show you the statistics. Right, sir. Everybody is saying Pabad is very difficult. What is the statistic? How many people are clearing from Pabad? What is the score of Pabad? You analyze all the things. See, first you have to like the subject. Pabad, if you feel it is very dry to read, I don't want to read Pabad. I like reading physics more. Read physics. I like solving mathematics. Solve mathematics. Right? If you don't like solving mathematics, you don't like science. Think about humanities optional. Right? You, if you feel sociology is good, if you feel public administration, psychology, read psychology for two three days, one week. Some NCERTs are available. No, or you Google Igno books. Any book you take of public administration, start reading the basics. Right, basic and see how you can connect with the subject. I will tell you the advantages of public administration later. But first thing is trend analysis. I will show you the trend analysis. It is an objective analysis, trend analysis. Second, as a, as you can uh, know, is there should be somebody to guide you. Unless otherwise you have done this as your graduation subject, there should be somebody to tell you and teach you. Right. The general studies they call it general studies. Why they call it general studies? You need only very general knowledge, even though questions are little applied. But still, even with very general knowledge, you might be able to answer most of them. But optional, even though they say that you require only graduation level knowledge, they mostly ask post graduation level questions in all optional. Right. So there should be somebody who has to teach you what you study up to post graduation. Post graduation is how many years? Graduation plus post graduation is five years. You have to finish this in four months. 
right we are going to study the whole content all optionals not just public administration all optionals are like that four years of engineering you have to finish in four months right so this is one aspect you need guidance you need somebody who have written this examination who have understood about this examination or who have cleared this examination somebody who have written so my personal experience i'll tell you i have written two mains both with public administration i have attended interview one interview both times i had more than 290 score both are about two times i wrote about i have 290 uh, one one time and 288 second time this is my about score so i understood about really well i did not make into the list because of other aspects not because of about about has never troubled me in my both mains so i have written two mains so i can tell you what will work what will not work this is one aspect then second is material availability right do you have books engineering you have books hundreds and thousands of books like how many of your engineers any engineer only one all our other other humanities how many science people 1 2 3 4 5 6 of you are from science so i don't i don't know how much science engineering if you take four years of books it will be uh, you know if you buy books if a person who buys but nowadays it might be photostat i don't know what is in market but if you take all the textbooks you know mechanic i am a mechanical engineer kurmi itself will be two three almaris of kurmi or right, right so it is not possible to read all these books times also i remember the dinesh of physics of class 12 that itself is this big physics dinesh you remember do these books are there in market now dinesh pradeep and all if you write engineering entrance and all this books are for the studies i don't know if it is there anyway make it availability so this is one aspect where the popular optionals shine what is the popular options i'll tell you why people pick certain optionals like history the optionals you said history geography public administration psych, uh, so, sociology this is popular optionals because of these two aspects one guidance some good faculty is there who is guiding people second you have material to study the subject right then you have to know your writing skills this is something we can work on right if even if you have no writing skills i can assure you that the writing skills can be improved right you can speak right now so this course will have something called a kind of enrichment program after your prelims we are doing it right now for the your previous uh, batch so after prelims we will sit and will write meticulously answers see why because because in the classroom program i will not be able to focus too much on answer writing because i am trying to finish the portion in 4 to 5 months right so there i'll discuss some pyqs but again i will give you test papers but again we will not be able to sit and write and, and will not be able to come and read your answers correct in the class itself but post prelims what we will do we will do this intensive answer writing program and content enrichment it is more like a revision value addition class plus answer writing plus test series all these things we will do post prelims that is where you will focus more on the optionals right because this course which we will be starting next week will end by say december approx won't extend till december august september october november uh, anyway december calculated december and then you will focus on prelims right from january how many of you are writing 2024 attempt like age wise and you can give attempt in 2024 all of you age wise all of you can give attempt no 2024 so when you are from january obviously you will be running around prelims so by the time you write prelims everything of abad will be forgotten whatever option you study you will forget it so after prelims you will revise summarize it and all of you should attempt to write mains in the first attempt this is my our target so prelims also i will try to help you out certain aspects we'll discuss after january we'll you know uh, personally i'll help you to uh, in certain aspects of prelims and all obviously you have mentors here and you will be allotted mentors they will also help you out so prelims we have to focus as i said the maximum elimination happen in the prelims phase then another aspect you have to consider is the gs overlap right if i study this subject how much it will help me in gs general studies so basically gs2 is called pabat paper 3 and gs4 is called pabat paper 4 we can call it like this because gs2 has a lot of overlap with pabat paper 2 pabat means public administration this is a colloquial term for public administration so we call it pabat right pabat so pabat paper 2 is nothing but gs2 there is a lot of overlap and general trend is pabat students score really well in paper 2 and ethics also 50 to 60% of the syllabus of ethics is pabad because they are ultimately going to test the ethics of future administrators so there is administrative ethics which we will study in pabad paper two. then there is philosophy of ethics like what socrates told what aristotle told this is not there in pabad so 
ethics has one philosophy part, one administrative part. Administrative part we are covering in Prabhat. So, two GS papers, you will get a lot of content from your Prabhat knowledge. So, we can ultimately crack four papers with the help of Prabhat. This is one other thing. Again, this you may or may not listen. It is up to you. Obviously, institute will tell you, join the options which the institute is offering. So sociology is the best optional, public administration is the best optional, history is the best optional because we have these faculties here. So this is one thing we will tell, institutes will tell, then your seniors will tell based on their experience. Again, I don't know how many people have analyzed the statistics of the optional. I will clearly show you there is no discrimination among any optional. Right. So this is few things you have to consider while choosing the optional. So if you analyze, say, we will analyze, now we will go to this trend analysis. First we will do that. If you analyze the rank of UPSC toppers, ranked one of the last 10 years, from 2013 to 2022, we are taking the topper rank. Which optional has performed the, you know, which optional has got the rank one maximum number of times? Which optional is performing the best in the market? TSAS. Which option is performing the best in the market? Anthropology. Sociology. I am taking only from 2013. What happened before 2013? Before 2013, two optional. So I think the last person to get first rank with two optional was first. First, Haridavi. Haridavi Kumar, the last Malayali to get first rank from in UPSC from Kerala. Do you know Haridavi Kumar? You don't even know Haridavi Kumar. She's right now the district collector of district collector of. Alapura. collector is the Chechi. None under understand it. Vishu Ayanu, she is now transferred to Alapi. She is now the district collector of Alapi. She is the last person to get all India rank 1 in the UPSC from Kerala. Right. She studies Malayalam literature and economics. Right. From 2013, you have to study only one optional. Right. They removed one optional. Syllabus revision of mains happened in 2013. From 2013 to 22, if you analyze which optional has performed best. PSIR, how many times it top? 5 times, 10 times, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 1 out of 10, more than that. See again, I don't know how this randomization happens, but maybe UPSC intentionally does this. Right. So, on PSIR, two times. The last time, 2015, then only in 2022. Then two times I think anthropology also, 17 and 20. Apart from that, every year different options have stopped the subject. Right. So, Pabad also was ranked 1 in 2019. History was ranked 1 in 2021. So, according to this probability, maybe next year geography, again there is a chance for Malayalam literature. Right. Only one time literature top 2016, Kannada literature. Right. So, I don't know, I think there will be some randomization. See, they will never promote one optional continuously. Even if you check the statistics of all options, you will understand that every optional will be given a fair chance. Right. So, there is no uh, logic that PSIR is the best optional. Sociology, so I think in the last 10 years, nobody from sociology got into first rank. That does not mean sociology is not performing. Second, third, fifth, sixth ranks is coming from sociology. Right. Sociology is also performing. I am not saying performing. Now, we will see <coughs> there are six popular optionals. Why popular? Why we call it popular? Maximum number of aspirants write the mains with it. That is why we call it popular, right? That is now your preference. So, if you are writing mains, you have picked public administration. No, if you are taking public administration, you have picked public administration. So, it is one, one subject. Before 2012, 50% of aspirants writing mains was with public administration, right? So, what happened after one optional? Three years. They asked very difficult questions from public. There is see, every three year one optional subject has one chairman in the UPSC, right? He might be deciding the question, the trend of question, the difficulty of question, etc. I think 13, 14, 15, three years public administration questions were very difficult questions. After that, questions normalized. 16. Maybe they did it intentionally to reduce the people taking public administration. I don't know why they did this. And that three years, mass got no reduce probably that is why people fear public administration there is nothing to fear as i said after that 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 you take any year paper all papers are very much doable right so 
if you take the trend of last, I have taken it from 15, you can take it to any years. This is all from UPSC reports. Right. There are six popular optionals. Which are the six popular optionals? Geography, History, PSIR, Sociology, Anthropology and Public Administration. These are the six optionals where the maximum number of people write the main. Right. Till 2019, Geography was the most popular optional. All these years, Geography was the most popular optional. Last year, last year, 2020, PSIR was the most popular optional. In terms of number of people writing the mains. It is nothing but people picking the paper optional. That is the only thing. Now, what you have to un understand is the conversion ratio. What is called conversion ratio? Conversion ratio? What is conversion ratio? No. If 100 people write the mains with one optional, how many of them make it into the list? Right. So, if 100 people write 10 purple clear, you, we can call the conversion ratio is 10 percentage. Right. So, if you analyze the conversion ratio, all optionals have more or less 8 to 10 percent conversion ratio. Right. All optionals, be it sociology, be it anthropology, be it, see, there are certain years some optionals have performed really well. There are certain years some options have not performed at all. In general, history and geography performance is a little lower on the lower side. Among the popular options I am saying, okay, not all options. Among popular options if you analyze the geography performance. Geography 2020 was is the highest number, 7.2. That means out of 10, 100 people writing, it's very clear is? It's very clear is. Before that it was 5.5, 5.1, etc, etc. CSIR. The best performance so far is 9.4 means out of 100 people writing 9.4 round it to 1000 people are 94 people will clear right. E versus only 8.3 that means iron bear is a very list 83 people public administration iron bear is a very 75 a very different it's not you know as people Think otherwise, public administration, there is no discrimination. This is a general rumor people say in the market. And you take the most popular option also, CSIR and anthropology. One year, they have hit a very high success ratio. Upper people, 41 people wrote, 14% success ratio was there. Right. After that, see this year, anthro success ratio is only 8.3. And even for bad, if you see, 2017 and 2018, sorry, 2016-17, we have more than 10% success ratio. 10.6 meaning, I remember area, 106 people will make it in the list. If it has, 102 people will. So, in the list, there are a lot of bad people. Right. If there are a lot of bad people, but people generally see, you can see the number of people taking bad is declining. 1795, 1506, 509. It's up to people to pick your options. That is the only thing. But the success ratio, Varies among all options. History in general lower side lana. Highest number one is 6.8 lana. This year only 4.1. Maybe history is a difficult subject. It's up to you. If you have the, again, and difficulty varying you know with the fourth dikka lana. Right. History you have to remember a lot of things. If you like reading things, if you like reading factual content, you can definitely take history. People do. Because even in history, 500 people wrote history means. Right, almost 600 people wrote history means. So, this is the objective evaluation of optionals. Right, last three, six years I am showing the data and I am so telling you that if you take public administration, there is no past discrimination. All optionals is like this. And as I said, there will be some normalization. Right, maybe that is how they are doing it, but all optionals they are giving kind of equal priority only. So, this is the objective analysis. Now, uh, what you have to do, if at all you are still confused, you have to narrow down to two optionals, right? Among the 26 optionals we discussed, pick two optionals you like. And then you read content about it. So, when you are reading content, don't take the driest book in the world and read. Right? Very factual books, if you take and read, you will obviously feel bored, right? Take or watch some videos. Just in you know, a public administration, you can come and sit in the first one or two classes and see what we are discussing, whether you like it or not. Right, this is what you can do. Confine to two options, read content from that option first thing. Second, maybe you can go through some previous year questions. 
Prabhat, I'll say go through paper two questions. Paper one, if you read now, if you have no Prabhat background, you won't understand. Because paper one is theory. I'll tell you what is in paper one. Paper one is the theoretical aspect of public administration. You might find it a little difficult. You read paper two and you read GS2 question paper. You can see the overlap. Right. Prabhat, paper two is more like GS2 only. You study things for GS2 means this question will come in Prabhat paper two. Right. There is a lot of overlap. So you read and see how... Uh, you can incline yourself to any subject. So this is the general things you have to consider uh, for before picking any options. All options are good. Right. Two things you have a you should have a good faculty to teach you. I'll tell you from a very practical point. Somebody to help you out. Right. You are comfortable with my class. You can uh, you know any kind of you should be able to listen to what I am telling in the class. Right. There should be a connect between the faculty and the teacher and the teacher should be ready to help you out. This is one thing. Second, books are pistam all ella in ella popular options. Pistam all books available. There are a lot of books available for all the popular options. Right. No dearth of books. So that is there in the market. I will tell you what books to read. Then answer writing. Practice this. Follow this. You can score marks. I will show you the bad marks. This year also in Trivandrum, people have scored 293. Right, Prabhat performed really well this year. This year's data will come only uh, next year's report. So, when next year's report I will I will get, I will show you the data then if you want. Right, for sure this year Prabhat performance is really well. I think around 8 to 9 percent students have cleared this year with Prabhat. In, even in Trivandrum, I think 4 people have around 290 scores. In my knowledge, I will not have a good mark in the end of the year. All of them have 280, 290 marks. Right. Now, so any questions in anything we have discussed so far, online, offline? Any questions in anything we have discussed? Any questions? Questions, questions, online, any questions? Right. Now let us hit the subject public administration. Right. What is public administration? What is public administration? If I ask you to tell me what is public administration, what will you tell me? What is public administration? Hmm. Who is public? Who is public? People. Okay. People. Administration means? Administration means, the roots I think is from Latin word administer, which means serve, basically to serve. You are called civil servants, not civil masters, not civil kings. You are called civil servants. So ultimately we are going to serve the society. We are going to provide services to the society. So we are discussing about how we can serve the society in the best possible way. Whether an IS officer, ICS officer, ISS officer, whatever officer, ultimately we are going to serve the society. Right. So how to do it better? That is what we are going to discuss. So again, why public administration? Certain aspects. I already told you there is a lot of GS overlap. Right. GS paper 2, 4, lot of overlap. Then again, this is what you are going to do in your life. Administration. So again, in Labasana, when you go, you will study all the things. Administration, you will study more things. There is law course, there is economics course, all the psychology, all the things they will teach you. But ultimately, you will be learning administration. Again, interview it will help you because interview they will try to test your administrative acumen. That they will you give you situational questions. You are appointed as a collector of your district. What all will be your priorities? So in my interview, uh, that uh, chairman asked me, you are appointed as a poly IPS officer in a district with less number of crimes. No, what all will be your priorities? So, administrative acumen, even if you have no public administration optional, they will ask you because ultimately you are going to be administrators. It will help you in your interview and uh, post election. So, again, there is a lot of real life connect, especially in a subject like public administration because ultimately we are de studying about society, how to deal with society. Right. So, whenever we are studying things, we can connect it with the real world. This is one aspect. When you are studying quantum physics, quantum mechanics, even now I don't know what exactly is 
you know the implications of quantum mechanics you have to imagine a lot of things and study aa prashnangal ivide illa because we are dealing with people society how we are interacting with people and society this is public administration those another aspect syllabus is very short and crisp we have 12 chapters in paper 1 14 chapters in paper 2 even then very short crisp syllabus unlike psir and all psir has a very vast syllabus so as compared to psir sociology also has a very short syllabus anthropology i don't know about the syllabus but about syllabus i can tell you is a very short syllabus you can cover the syllabus first round of studies will take 4 to 5 months 4 months to 5 months after that if you want to revise you can revise it very quickly because content wise we can finish it very fast and again previous performance i'll show you the previous performance these are the toppers of sabad in last year's main so fortunately or unfortunately the marks i have seen illa naan kanda marks mathre eduthullu Uh, the person who got the highest marks in PABAD did not clear the examination. He did not make into the line, uh, ma- rank list. That is not because of PABAD. Right? PABAD matra marko ani kitni dhari liya. You have to score in all the other papers also. SA list score yena, GS list score yena, interview list score yena. So this is his mark list. See, he got 156 and 147 in PABAD. This is a really good mark. As interview, he scored 155. SL he scored only 100, and GS also he scored less than 400, and he could not make it in the list. Sir, I'm asking him, is there any other reason? He is the topper again, rank 31, 292, 294, 293. There are a lot of 290s here. 290 is a really good score in optional. Current trend at our marine 2016 le 330 varega kordo the thunder. That time 300 was very easily achievable. Now 300 is not very easily achievable for any option, not for bad. They are not giving. Now, like standard, there is a standardization which is happening. So all options they will try to keep the highest score to 300, right? So this guy who got 300, so they gave 300 in for bad. He could not clear. So Priyan, uh, Priyansha Shah, uh, sorry, Gar, this is her score. So she scored 153 and 139 in. Uh, This papers, the bad paper one and paper two. See, you check. See, in general, I am telling you. See the paper two score. One one five. Here also paper two score. Paper two number is what? General studies paper two. Those who are in the August May batch will know. Do you guys know what is paper two? Paper two is Indian polity, right? Indian polity, governance, constitution, all these things is paper two, right? This is what. We are studying in Sabad paper two also. Then 2021, the top rank of Sabad was 17. My head day. She had 259. Again, 2021, I did not see any marks above 300. So I got the marks highest I scored was so was 288. Because rank 17, 100, 100 easily. Kiran, he scored 285. So again, people have cleared. Right, 280, 290, easily achievable. So this is the scorecard of my head. She scored 114, but she got less marks in paper two. Why we don't know. But if she had, she had good marks in paper two. Also, she might have been ranked one. We don't know. So 140, 190. Is the Abhinav no or another student mark? Ano 131, 143. Good score. 2020 less. Again, Karishma is a Malayali. Uh, she her interviews there in the Sangar YouTube channel. So she scored 269, 266, 299 was the highest score I saw. Again 300. Near to 300 people have scored. So this is group third year's mark list, 150, 149. So 50, 150 is a good, I mean, uh, kind of highest score in GS papers. Right. That is mark mark, 139, 130. Again, there is a concept of penalty mark. Exactly, we don't know why UPSC gives penalty mark. Mostly on writing on the margins, uh, might be or uh, I don't know exactly. Writing on the margins is one general idea why they give you penalty. Is what I understand. Then Avinash 129, 137. This was 2019. Obviously, rank one was public administration 293, and then rank 11, Nupur Goel 302. This was the top scores. Nupur Pradeep. Then 2018. So many people, and there was somebody who got 312 in the first system itself. In the bad, but possible. Very much possible if you spend time. Then 331 was there. In that year again, this is see. If you look into the scores this year, a lot of people are scoring 300, 300, 330, 330, etc. So that means everybody in all optionals got this scores, right? So if you are skiing 290, 290, 290, that means most optionals that would be the highest score. 
This is a trend. This is why I said normalization. They give you. So, 2018, lot of people got 300, 333, 331. Lot of scores. So, her priest had 2162, 169, 163, 151. 17, again, uh, 311. Top score. 16. I think this is the so far the highest score I have seen in Babad. 334. Abhilash Mishra. Rank 5 in 2016. Right. So, the point I wanted to tell is the previous performance of Abad. You can and you should target target 300 in an optional subject. Right. This is our target. 300 in an optional subject, very much possible. And if you analyze the previous ranks also, Abad is not you know, uh, butchered in any manner or Prabhupada is not, it is not, there is no discrimination in, uh, to the subject of Prabhupada. All optionals, the analysis you can do for all the optionals. Maybe other faculty would be doing it, I don't know. But if you do this analysis, all subjects will be like this. No discrimination, no partiality. You can score 300 in public administration optional. So, we can divide the syllabus into, we will now be, go into the technical aspects so that you understand what we are studying, go, going to study in the next four months. Paper 1 is called Administrative. <coughs> Theory. That is a theory part of how public administration evolved as a subject, right? And what are the theory? What are the different perspectives you will do as an administrator? Theoretically, you will study this. And paper two, we will deal with Indian administration. What we do in India as administrators? What are the things you are doing in India? How is financial administration happening in India? How civil services is recruited in India? Then uh, how PSUs are managed in India? Then there is a chapter on union government. What is union government? Central government. Same thing you study in polity. Then there is a chapter on state government. Same thing you study in polity. Then there is a chapter on district administration. So union government, state government, district administration. Then there is something called Panjaiti Raj Institute. Do you know what is Panjaiti Raj Institute? Basically, Gram Sabha, Panjayati like uh, 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment. Panjayati, that is two chapters, Urban Local Body and Panjayati Raj Institute. So basically how administration happened in India is paper 2. Paper 1 is the theory part, right? Theory of administration is paper 1. So again, as I said, just you can write, you write the question, what is public administration? What is public administration? Serving the public. You can give the answer in two lines. Two sentences. Write two sentences and give me the answer. What is public administration? right
this fast phone So most of your answer use the word serve the people. That right? you are all serving the people good only. So this is only one aspect of public administration. So public administration, whenever you hear the term public administration, there are two aspects which should come in your mind. Public administration is a discipline. What does it mean by discipline? It is a subject you are studying. Right? It is a theory subject you are studying and it is an activity. This is where your service and all the other things will come. Right. This is the applied part. You go into the society, serve the people. So public administration is an activity. Public administration as a discipline, as a subject, when did it evolve? We have only a history of 130, 140 years. Only in 1887, there is a former president of USA called Woodrow Wilson. Wilson will say, that otherwise public administration is considered as a sub part of political science. Right. There was no separate discipline of public administration. It was studied as a sub part of political science. Woodrow Wilson at that time will say we should study public administration as a subject, separate subject. This is the beginning of, this is the symbolic beginning of the discipline of public administration. So what are we going to do here? We are going to deal with the Discipline of public administration first. Then you are going to Labasana. What is Labasana? Lar Bhadu Shastri National Academy of Administration. There you will deal with the discipline. You will study the subject. And then you will come to your home cadre and you will apply it. Activity. There are two aspects. The first part is mostly dealing with the disciplinary concerns. Right. So the first chapter is basically how public administration evolved. There is only a brief history of 130, 140 years. From Woodrow Wilson in 1887 to 2023. How has the subject evolved is chapter 1. So you will study all the basics. What is the meaning of public administration? What are the activities done by a public administrator? What is the, how did it evolve? Right, how did it evolve? How did it come into existence? And uh, Wilson, what is what was Wilson wish, Wilson's vision? Who is Wilson? Woodrow Wilson is considered the father of public administration. So what did Wilson say about public administration? Why did Wilson want to study public administration as a separate discipline? All these things we will discuss. Right. So first chapter is about the basics of public administration and the evolution. There are different phases through which public administration will evolve. And how does the subject evolve? Public administration is closely linked with the society. So administration will evolve depending upon the problems of the society. Right. Now, the society is moving towards all this artificial intelligence, all these things. So, administration should evolve to deal with the problems and complexities of the society. This is how administration will evolve. So, in general, if you understand society, there are two, three phases of how society has evolved. Again, just for your understanding, there is a concept called laser sphere. Do you know what is laser sphere? Laser sphere is nothing but free market. So there are few proponents of free market called one famous proponent is Adam Smith. Right. What is free market? What is free market? Government should not control the market. Right. Market should be allowed to work very freely. If there is a demand for something, let the market produce it. Demand in language automatically our product in the CD drives or have you seen floppy disks? There are something called floppy disks which was used to store data a long time back. Floppy disks, you know, gone out of market. Why? No demand. Government should need not have to tell, okay, reduce floppy disks. Automatically it will die down. 
right this is called free market let the market function by itself government only do minimum things of regulating policing functions tax collect any tax collect any the minimalistic activity ma ka aari cheda adi government is on a free market from free market we will evolve to something called welfare state and then welfare state sir state should do everything in the society it evolve cheynathu 1930 aanu what is the significance of 1930 world is again administration evolves in which country administration evolves basically in yes yeah, serving public answer uh, online also i hope you understood so most of the people the serving public only but there are two aspects it should come in your mind whenever see we say public administration from now you think public administration as a discipline and activity now coming back what happened in 1930 you have to know world history administration basically as a subject evolves in america ippolana adu korchum kuda global aayathu basically this administration evolved in america america went through something called depression right america went through depression after world war 1 america market boomed and then collapsed all of a sudden collapsed so people job loss was heavy people were poor poverty was very high so to deal with all this thing that time american president said okay now we are going to provide every service to the society right whatever you need we will provide state became the ultimate provider this is called welfare state right from welfare state we are moving towards something called corporate state in 1970s so what happened state started providing everything people wanted but ultimately state provides means who is providing who is giving the services state provides means who is giving the services again <clears throat> for uh, may back it might be repetition for the new people democracy has three wings or three pillars what are the pillars legislature executive judiciary there are three pillars of democracy what is the role of legislature legislature will make laws executive implement laws and judiciary law adjudication so parliament suppose parliament is making a law or a policy who will implement this policy in on ground executive again executive we can divide it into two types of executive there is political executive and permanent executive who is political executive ministers they are elected only for 5 years then they will change who is permanent executive bureaucrats you are all studying to be permanent executives you are all going to implement the laws of the government you are all going to implement the policies of the government so when the government is saying that we will provide you certain things who is ultimately providing all this thing right when we are saying government what is government nammal kaanna government endana executive executive is providing us right if you want something you will visit the collectorate or you will receive the maybe secretary it will meet people there they are all representing the government so what happened is by 1970s this welfare state started failing because bureaucracy has a lot of problems right bureaucracy in its traditional bureaucratic corruption is there bureaucracy was very much corrupted there is something called red tape system what is red tape system chuvappu nada red tape system what is red tape system you would have seen in government files government files is folded with a red tape right you will never open this red tape you will keep it as a file you keep it in the shelf for years it will be there so this is called red tape is a means files will not move things will not happen so it had a lot of problems people were very much agitated that government was not functioning that time we thought that let us move towards solution to all the problems of the society if you want to provide services not government but who can provide it better private sector so here government means public sector public sector people felt that private sector will be able to solve all the problems of the society 
right so private sector private sector and we started something called lpg reforms what is lpg reforms liberalization privatization globalization right even if you don't know any of this does not matter as you read more ncrts as you read more basic books all these things you will understand i'm just giving you a brief of what you are going to study as i said in my polity class also this is like a trailer when you see the trailer you won't understand anything the suspense is when you see, see the actual movie so you have to wait for the the whole thing to unfold after four months i tell you all the things you will know things better than me right so what happened lpg reforms were adopted and what happened there were a lot of problems of private sector also what is the problem of the private sector their motive is nothing but profit the orient the motive of government is service public welfare so private sector if you let as i know you are asking ambani to provide public welfare will he try to get give public welfare or will he try to gain profit profit so private sector also had problems right then the government understood that you can a private sector is not the solution you need welfare corporate state you need welfare corporate state where the state and the private sector should come together right so we will link it to different theories in public administration so beginning say some theories are there then we will move to something towards see all these things in the syllabus i'm just giving you again there is something called <coughs> new public administration right so initially public administration came certain people wanted to revive public administration because public administration was failing we call it new public administration then when new public administration also failed people wanted to bring private sector this is what we call new public management so these are all terms which we will study again this is the first chapter first chapter is nothing but the evolution of public administration now from there we have moved to something called good governance now it is governance how to manage the people good governance again all this concept new public management challenges of lpg liberalization privatization globalization again we are moving to public choice lpg npm is all privatization impact of privatization and how it has impacted us administrators right so first chapter is chapter 1 is public administration we are public administrators we will study how it evolved again as many of you have wrote in your question some of you have wrote in your question to we are administrators right but we deal with but uh, how do we deal with the public how do we interact with the public do i come with a mic and announce every day hello hello i am the collector of the trivandrum please come to me do, do i go to tambanura with a mic and announce i am collector please come come i will solve all your how do we solve the problems of the society no how how like uh, as i am saying i am the collector no how do you know that i am the collector where to come etc there is a place called the collector right no i know that if you go to the collector right collector will be there i can approach him if you go to the secretariat there will be people secretaries who can help you so we reach the public through something called public organizations organizations right so collector right secretary these are all organizations through which you will reach the public right so chapter 4 is nothing but public organization how are we interacting with the public or public this is public organization now what fills this public organization the collectorate poi kanya aar undu aalkar undu right we are dealing with people right so it needs people we call it personal people is called personal management or personal administration അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ ആൾക്കാർ മാത്രം മതിയോ നമ്മൾ രാവിലെ കുറെ പേര് അവിടെ പോയിരിക്കുന്നു പണി നടക്കുമോ പണി നടക്കണമെങ്കിൽ എന്ത് വേണം റിസോഴ്സസ് ഇൻഫ്രാസ്ട്രക്ചർ മീനിങ് വീ നീഡ് റിസോഴ്സസ് മണി ഷുഡ് വിൽ മേക്ക് എസ് വർക്ക് സോ ദെർ ഇസ് ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ മാനേജ്മെന്റ് റൈറ്റ് സോ ഇഫ് യു ടേക്ക് പേപ്പർ വൺ ചാപ്റ്റർ ത്രീ ഇസ് 
sorry chapter 4 is organization chapter 9 is personal administration so this we will study in chapter 9 and financial administration we will study in chapter 12 right what is personal administration and what is financial administration then we will discuss about what affects these people the most complex thing to study in the world is people human behavior and how to influence the human behavior how to motivate these people how to interact with these people this is called administrative behavior so this is called administrative behavior which we will study in chapter 3 chapter 3 So chapter 3 is administrative behavior. Then we will discuss about how we interact with the society. There are certain aspects of interacting with the society. There are certain things we people expect from us. Which is called accountability and control. Accountability and control which is chapter 5. No, we have to be accountable to the people. right? And we have to be accountable to the Superiors, who are our superiors? Who are our superiors? Who are our superiors? Government or politicians, ministers, right? So if I am a very low, um, if I am a say, or uh, secret, um, uh, you know, jumping things, you might not understand. Um, I have super, I have IS officers above me, right? So I am responsible to them as well as to the minister. So I am accountable to them, I am accountable to people also. There are two different types of accountability. So how we are kept accountable etc. is dealt with in chapter 5. Then 6th chapter is called administrative law. Two things. Who makes law? Ah, legislature makes law. Right. So ultimately when a minister is making a law, does our electricity minister might be 8th standard pass. He doesn't even know how electricity is generated. So who actually makes laws for them? Bureaucrats, right. So how are we making laws? One aspect. And there should be laws to control us also. Us in the sense, bureaucrats. Else if you are left free, bureaucrats will rule the country and, uh, yes, crew in the country also. So there should be some laws on us also. So this is what is dealt in chapter 6 which is called administrative law. Now coming to chapter 2, like every other chapter, sorry every other subject we have certain fingers. As I said Wilson is the first person who said we should study public administration. Wilson is called an administrative finger, just given some thought into administration. Similarly we have fingers like Taylor, Fayol, Weber, these are all people who have said different things about administration. So chapter 2 of paper 1 is nothing but administrative theories or administrative thoughts. Right, chapter 2 we will discuss about all what did Weber say, what did Fayol say, what did uh, Taylor say, what did uh, there is Mary Parker Foley, what did she say? So there is a book for that. I will explain about books and all in the first class. Now we are only understanding the syllabus. So this is theory. Different people are different. So Foley will say how to motivate people. Right. Simon, there is another thing called Simon. Simon will say how to uh, influence the decision of people. Right. So this is we are all dealing with human behavior. And how to make organizations efficient. What organization? What organizations? Public organizations. How to make public organizations efficient and how to influence the behavior of people, bureaucrats, or how to improve the behavior of bureaucrats. So, scientific management theories there, classical theories by Fayol. These are all singers Weber, Mary Parker Foley, Mayo, Elton Mayo, Bernard, Simon. Then there are three singers. I am not discussing their names now. We will study all the singers one by one. What is their uh, you know, contribution? This is there in all papers. Now, now you say if you feel, okay, there are a lot of things to study in public administration. Let us go to sociology. Sociology has a history of 500 years. Now, we have a history of 130 years. You have to study fingers in only 130 years. 
right there is 500 years starting from aristotle you have to study everything a b c d you have to study so all papers whether it is political science whether it is sociology if you are studying humanities there are thinkers there are people who have given different thought process into the uh, development of the subject of the discipline this is the second chapter so third chapter as i said is behavior so in behavior communication motivation leadership decision making all these things will be discussed this is the third chapter administrative behavior fourth chapter is organizations so organizations what are the different structure ministries boards commissions this is the fourth chapter we will go through all this thing fifth chapter is accountability how we can ensure the accountability with the people and with the bureaucrats all the things legislative executive judicial accountability citizens media role of media role of uh, interest group pressure group do you know what is the pressure group pressure group means they influence pressure on the government right so again they will keep you there will be pressure on you also But nowadays one pressure group in social media is children and parents malayana avadharana malayana avadharana you take collector page it is filled with the pressure group of children they keep on writing vellapakkana malayana porthiranga mattilla so the collector is pressurized to take decision very simple example not a correct example collector will never take decision because people are filling his facebook insta page right he will take he or she will take decision only based on data naalathe malayada prediction anusarichu allengi heavy rain red alert anengil avu therum naale ipo ninnippa tirunoorthu malai illa ennaanu enikku thonu there is no rain here correct did not give holiday maybe probably today's rain alert was yellow or whatever it is no heavy rain no need of holiday you will correct sir my house is flooded i have to swim and come to the college academy you have to swim and come no other go anyway this is all pressure group very uh, similar then civil society what is civil society again the pressure groups are also part of civil society so we'll again discuss governance concept of governance as three pillars one is public public ultimately means government we are represented by you know how do we our thoughts are represented how who represent our thoughts our elected representatives avare evide ullad legislature no we cannot go and uh, think tell things directly so our thoughts are represented by the government then there is private sector and the third pillar is called civil society example ngos interest group all these are example of civil society so they also help in in you know in uh, enforcing accountability now nowadays there are a lot of ngos there are a lot of interest group who will key ensure that the government is functioning properly this is all part of accountability and control sixth chapter is administrative law so how do we make laws and how are laws implemented on us there are two three concepts so there is something called administrative tribunals is all gs overlap and that administrative tribunals meaning what are tribunals quasi judicial body what is a quasi judicial body quasi means half so half of them might be judges half of them will be administrators right so we make laws we give judgment one aspect and then there are judgment there are some laws on us also delegated in that what is delegated legislation have you heard this term delegated legislation yes have you heard this term or no rajya sabha delegated legislation illa the delegated legislation basically means as i said parliament the law making body in the country is legislature parliament parliament does not have time to make the law in detail because they how many sittings are there for the parliament when you read lakshmi kan you will read it how many sittings are there for the parliament in a year only three sittings right and they sit for maybe maximum 100 days maximum right so the detail they will pass a law they will clap pass the law the details are made by again bureaucrats bureaucrats this concept is called delegated legislation we are given the charge or power to make law even though law making is the priority of legislature executive have some power to make law this concept is called delegated legislation this also we will discuss in administrative law now 7th and 8th chapter are interconnected 7th chapter is comparative public administration again a theoretical chapter see at 
for a, for a anything to be called a science what is the first aspect of a scientific subject objectivity how will objectivity come when there is universality right when i say newton's law newton's law is applicable only in india or newton's law is applicable only in america newton's law is applicable anywhere in the world is universality so if you want to make any subject into a scientific subject we have to make we have to apply universality so for this universality to come we have to study if you want to make public administration as a scientific subject right we have to study it in different countries across the world and then come out with theory because we are dealing with discipline of public administration right so we are trying to compare the administration of different countries that is called comparative public administration we are comparing historical factors sociological factors administration in different countries then ecology ecology means the environment right how the surroundings affect the administration administration of india is totally different from the administration of china which is again totally different from the administration of saudi arabia which is again totally different from the administration of somalia right that's all these the surroundings are different right what is the surroundings so should be the administration this is ecology and admi of administration then there is a thinker again rick frederick uh, uh, fw rick who has given a lot of uh, points on comparative public administration which we'll discuss in the seventh chapter eighth chapter is an uh, you know coming from that we call development this is what we are all eager to do no we want to bring development we are all going to be collectors and doing development so how did this concept of development came as a uh, theory we will study the concept of development dynamics what is development development administration etc etc bureaucracy development all these things we will study women and development another aspect so we will discuss about the theoretical aspect not just india across the world we will discuss the development ninth chapter i told you personal administration we need people and how these people are recruited across the world we will discuss grievance redressal administrative ethics etc etc 10th chapter is again another duty we will do so basically once you get into the service what are the jobs you will do what are jobs i have slight throat problems i'll ask some uh, tea or coffee hope you don't mind i'm not do you do you want a break no break Maybe you are sleeping. I know you are sleeping. So for the sleeping, you have to bring some pill by yourself. Now I, I would have told in the previous class, bring some coffee. Co. No, don't in the class. That is very unprofessional. Uh, apart from that, you can do. You bring some chocolate. You drink some water. You bring some snacks. You eat. And when I turn back, you can do something so that you are alert in the class. Not just also. For the previous also, you do this. I don't mind. You have to be alert. Right. <coughs> As I said in my GS class, I will not be taking class like. Hello, welcome to public administration optional class 91.9. And this is not the way class is going to happen. No, I have to. If I, even now, because of last week's quality and uh, classes, my throat is a little down. So uh, there will be some tone and mode which I will be taking. So you have to be alert. Right. At times my voice will be very sweet. I know. Will be very sleepy also. This is I know. Right. So you have to be alert. You have to be alert. Now, once you get into the service, what are the jobs you are going to do? all of your first preference is ias ips ifs ifs so let us take ias for the help of ease of understanding because we are studying administration what are the jobs you are going to do sir collector i am going to be collector day one collector day 100 collector i am a retired also collector i will be the district collector i will come in car boo 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 car will come and i will everybody will look the district collector board will be there i will declare holiday for all flights every day now i will be people hero public hero is it in all this movies would have scared us no in, in this promote will come and shout india enda nareyanam and then people will come and clap wow collector collector super super and then vani vishnu also in that movie or you would have been motivated by this guy Dulkar Salman, Vikramaditya, 
ഓൾസോ ഹാർഡ് പിസ വിറ്റോണ്ട് പഠിക്കുന്നു ഞാൻ അതുപോലെ ഒക്കെ പഠിച്ച് ദൻ ഈ കംസ് ഇൻ ഐ എസ് ഓഫീസേഴ്സ് ലിവ് ഇൻ പോളി വിൽ കം ആൻഡ് ഷൌട്ട് ഓൺ പീപ്പിൾ ഓൾ ദിസ് തിങ്സ് ദിസ് മൂവീസ് ഓർ യു ഹാവ് ബീൻ മോട്ടിവേറ്റഡ് ബൈ ഓൾ ദിസ് സിംഗ് ദ മൂവീസ് ഐ ടി എസ് ഗൈസ് മേ ബി യു വിൽ കം ആൻഡ് ഹാഷിംഗ് എ പീപ്പിൾ വിൽ വിൽ കം ആൻഡ് ത്രോ ദ ചെയർ ആൻഡ് ചെയർ വിൽ ഫ്ലൈ നത്തിങ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഇൻ റിയാലിറ്റി so as an administrator is officer what are you going to do enda cheyan povane onnu cheyathile enda cheyan povane administration what are you going to administer ha eh? ah, according to the problem we analyze and then decision and you uh, then yes see ultimately there are two things you will do one is called policy formulation and the second is called policy implementation right as you said you analyze the policy or you analyze the problem and you give a solution this is called formulation and then there should be somebody to make it effective on ground policy formulation so there are two phases to your career first phase is called field posting what is field posting what is field posting all this collector deputy collector so not deputy collector is not there in kela sub collector assistant collector now there is i think ddc also district development commissioner all this is field posting you are on the field you are implementing policies where will you formulate the policies secretariat so mostly after uh, say 7 to 8 to 9 years see i district collector and all is your lower level posting in a sense you are still in the junior level right once you become senior level all your postings will be in the secretariat you will be serving in a ministry under a minister and you will be called secretary you are all studying to be secretaries right so you will all become secretaries in some phase of your career and there is a hierarchy there secretary additional secretary joint secretary deputy secretary and under secretary right under secretary is not for upsc if you are clearing k what is case kerala administrative service you will be entering as under secretary then after 8 years you will be promoted as ias then you can become deputy secretary generally the equivalent of uh, collector if you are going to the secretariat in a very young phase you will be serving as deputy secretary so our entry phase is called deputy secretary generally in that phase nobody goes to secretariat all of you will be in the field right you will be collector sub collector all the things will be doing mostly we will be going to the secretariat as joint secretary then there is additional secretary then there is secretary then there is at times principal secretary who is the chief secretary who is chief secretary cabinet is in union government state is chief secretary chief secretary is the senior most ias officer of the state right so that senior most not in age everybody retires at everybody retires at 60 years if you are a central government employee you retire at 60 years so 60 years will be very much your seniority will depend upon years of service if you are in the 21st year you will have the seniority to you will have the seniority to become cabinet secretary right if state will have 30 35 years of service on then you can definitely become chief secretary so chief secretary is nothing but the senior most ias officer so chief secretary will manage and coordinate all the secretary secretary is the administrative head of a ministry right so ministry all ministries will have two heads one is the political head and the second is the administrative head who is the political head of a ministry minister minister is a political executive and who is the administrative head who is the administrative head you are all going to be that at one phase of your career after i think 20 25 years you will be the secretary of a ministry right you will be then above you there will be chief secretary in the state and in the union government is called 
cabinet secretary right so this chapter 10 is about public policy right how to make policies different phases of policies all these things we'll study in chapter 10 public policy is different phases and chapter 11 is how we can improve ourselves there are some scientific tools to make decisions it's actually very old I, I don't now we have moved towards artificial intelligence right that and all is not included here basically it is about how to use technology to make some decisions this is the 11th chapter which is called techniques of administrative improvement like e-governance IT etc the syllabus of this is now dra was drafted in 2013 10 years no updation this high time syllabus updation should come and I expect it any time after 2024 because 2024 what is happening the great Indian Tamasha called elections right 2024 elections will happen mostly Narendra Modi will become the prime minister again and in one two years they will revise the syllabus so that time maybe they will remove the optional even if there is one advantage that even if they remove the optional public administration will be there near BS paper for sure public administration because if they remove the optional what will happen they will add two more GS papers in 2013 when they removed two uh, GS papers sorry two in till 2013 two optional and two GS papers so they removed one GS optional and they increased two GS papers right now if they remove this option also what they will do add two more GS papers so this GS paper for sure will contain public administration so you don't have to worry you will have expertise there also i don't know i don't think it will be happening but still if at all i'm saying this rumors as you said there's a lot of great pen you will sit in the reading room and study somebody will say they are going to do move you didn't hear i have got information from the ministry itself minister itself told me that for next year no optional all these things you will come in the course of your profession don't worry about any of this focus only on this attempt anyway last chapter of paper one is financial administration as I said every organization needs money and you have to manage money right what is so important about you managing money as an administrator you are working for Ambani and managing money you are working for government and managing money what is the difference huh? uh, audit is there for Ambani also Ambani will hire a chartered accountant and audit it you will also have audit what is the difference there so, Ambani is also serving the public. Huh? Yes. You are spending not your money. In Ambani, you are spending Ambani's money. The loss happens only to Ambani. Ambani can fire you. It is over. But when you are serving the government, you are spending people's money. You are accountable to people. So, it is a huge accountability. So, how you can spend money, auditing, accounting, all this basic concepts is studying chapter 12 right so this is paper 1 where we will be discussing the theoretical aspects of public administration there are certain books we will discuss these books probably in the first class you know, this is a little uh, every chapter has certain books reference right every chapter has book reference uh, once we join uh, we will form group whatsapp telegram everywhere I will share the ppt like all the ppt you can take I have no intellectual property on any of this it's all taken from different sources Syllabus is given by UPSC. I just copy pasted it here. This uh, sources you can find anywhere. So the first and primary source for studying public administration will be will be inability. You know, inability is here, paper two. We are coming there only. First and primary source for studying public administration will be hmm, NCRT. There is no NCRT for public administration. Even in graduation, we don't have public administration. Forget NCRT. Your class notes. What we discuss in class, for sure if you study that, I can assure you that you will be able to answer questions. Right? You can value that from any book, you can ask uh, the people who have studied last year, you will have comprehensive class notes. Right? We will discuss everything in detail, I will dictate notes in the class. You will have to write, write and write, your hands might pain but it is okay, you are let the hands pain, we will write notes. Right? We will write notes, I can give you printed notes also but writing notes matters because ultimately you are not typing your answers. You are writing three hour test so we will keep writing your ansel pain you can bring bolini and you know use it in the class i don't mind but we will write notes i think last year people had seven seven eight notes books of public administration that will be there for you also so you what you can do don't buy small small notebooks buy 
big big notebooks then you will have lesser number of notebooks at at least you can expect five to six notebooks of public administration you will you will be there at the end of the course and one another thing you can do is make take papers spiral bind it this is one thing so here you can spiral bind 200 papers so paper 1 will have more notes because we are dealing with the theory paper 2 is more indian administration you can read it from books your lakshmi kanth is there you will get no study from multiple sources but paper 1 notes will be i feel at least three notebooks will be paper 1 and maybe two notebooks will be paper 2 if it is big notes so if it is small this notebook it will be at least seven eight notebooks like this right so first and foremost you will have your class notes read these class notes hundreds of times as many number of times as possible then you will understand the subject very thoroughly then you value it there is a book called aribam right aribam is an is officer he was a student of a delhi institute right so what he did he after studying this course from the delhi institute whatever notes he had he published as a textbook so aribam is nothing like a guide you know in schools and all you would have guides you no know, for any so aribam is a guide where syllabus wise he writes things right good book simple book to understand the best the most most needed book for public administration is mohit bhattacharya but the problem with mohit bhattacharya is it is a very uh, technical technical in the sense there are certain terms in public administration paper 1 which for which first you have to sit in the class like if i say post modernism post structuralism post behaviorism if you are a humanities aspirant you might understand this science aspirants will never know all this term so this we will discuss in the class what is post structuralism post modernism once you listen in in the class you read it from uh, mohit bhattacharya you will understand else you start mohit bhattacharya will say in there itself so please don't start i said read one book of babat uh, so tomorrow onwards somebody is reading mohit bhattacharya i am starting mohit bhattacharya you say no babat so, so please don't read mohit bhattacharya mohit bhattacharya is for your third level of studying first level of studying is second level of studying aribam third level of studying is mohit bhattacharya then uh, this nikola sendri is like a reference book nikola sendri is an international author right so some aspects of in the class itself i will be giving you notes from all these books don't worry we will be touching all these books i will be referring all these books i will be giving you notes like nicolas henry first chapter there is something called evolution of public administration so nicolas henry divides this evolution into six paradigms six phases this is the most accepted evolution of public administration so we will be discussing that only in the class from nicolas henry mohit bhattacharya also will be referring in multiple papers but i'll not be telling okay this i am discussing mohit bhattacharya this i am discussing from somewhere else no this i will be discussing from lot of papers interconnected right you can read it and uh, strengthen whatever you have but first i will say read class notes first you are thorough with the class notes you read any book you want and then there is a basic book called prasad and prasad which you have to buy prasad and prasad is for your administrative thinkers i told you know chapter 2 there are uh, i think 10 11 thinkers we have to study so this thinkers is written in this prasad and prasad this is one book you can buy and if you want to buy book buy aribam right aribam you can buy mohit bhattacharya also you can buy maybe a little later right first you buy aribam prasad and prasad is but enough for the time being mohit bhattacharya also you have to buy or take photo set whatever it is then igno is there right what is igno national open university so he, they have mpa master in public administration not bachelor master course they have some six seven books some books of mpa will be helpful some books so these are the sources for paper 1 paper 2 is nothing but as i told what you are you are going eagerly waiting to do what are you eagerly waiting to do serve the society so here we will serve when we learn about how india we are serving the society so 14 chapters simple chapters we will finish paper 2 this batch i am starting with paper 2 so we will start with paper 2 then we will go to paper 1 right so we will start with paper 2 we will finish this very fast paper 2 there are 14 chapters first chapter is nothing but evolution when did public administration start as an activity as a discipline i told you when did it start wilson 1887 as an activity when did it start as an activity when did it start after independence 
maybe so activity have you heard about ram rajya ram rajya i don't know whether it is there or not but have you heard this concept called ram rajya are the position all of some flop but still even ram rajya had administration right you study in the history you know ancient india right what is the first civilization you study indus valley indus valley also had administration right vedic age also had administration mauryans also had administration guptas also had administration so when society came we don't know from that time we have administration as an activities as old as society we have started studying it very lately so there are two three people we will two three areas three specific areas we will study in indian administration first major book written on indian administration was by a person called kautilya he is popularly called chanakya chanakya arthashastra right so this chanakya arthashastra is considered as a pre tied best book on good governance administration so we have to study about kautilya and his arthashastra then the second major uh, what you can call administrative example in india was mughal administration right mughal had a very good administrative system that we will study and the third is british administration so indian administration history we will study three things one arthash kautilya kautilya was the minister of chandragupta maurya maurya so mauryan administration kautilya mughal administration and british administration three things second chapter is called philosophy of indian constitution right again paper 2 we will start with paper 2 in the sense gs2 polity we will start with constitution so here also we will discuss constitutionalism what is constitution constitutionalism all these things again everything is bureaucracy democracy bureaucracy development all these things is very simple what is again we are i think we are yet to discuss in the political class what is constitutionalism constitutionalism basically means why we need a constitution what is constitution constitution is fundamental law of the land right fundamental law of the land why we need a fundamental law tell us i said government will change you uh, know i i think i would have given this example in the political class like today green means go traffic light i gave an example no green light means go red light means stop tomorrow government is saying red light means go green light means stop they will do uh, you know they, what if they change law every day we cannot live in the society so there should be some fundamental laws which they are following so constitutionalism is nothing but limited government right we are limiting the powers of the government to do any random thing they have to govern according to the fundamental law of the land called constitution this is the basic concept of constitution so this philosophy all the things we will discuss in chapter 2 chapter 3 we will deal with one organization public organization in india called psu what is psu yes full form is public sector undertaking what is it what is public sector undertaking basically organizations we can divide into into public organizations and private organizations so basically <clears throat> this public companies right government also runs certain companies example a railway then indian oil ppcl ongc all these are you write these exams so people write the exam to get into the government services so these companies which are run by the government is called psu public sector undertaking so who manages this public sector again mostly the md of a psu will be an is officer you are managing you have to make it profitable so that is why psu is a chapter on syllabus fourth chapter is fourth chapter is union government sixth chapter is state government seventh chapter is district administration district administration means who is the who manages district administration collector district collector district collectors role all these things we will study in the 
seventh chapter. So this is again fully overlapping with the PS2 syllabus, polity syllabus. You will study it in polity also. Some things we will study extra. Like when we study union government, we will study something called cabinet secretary. This is there not in there in your polity. So here we are studying a little bit of administration also. There we are focusing only on polity part, but legislature, executive, judiciary. Here we will discuss a little bit of administration also, cabinet secretary. Apart from that, it is mostly overlapping executive, legislature, judiciary. They are functioning, working, everything you can read from Lakshmi Gandhi. So when I will tell you what we will be starting in the class, you should read Lakshmi Gandhi and come. Right, those who are in the new, how many of you are from uh, uh, July batch? One, you also. No, you are from May batch, no? So you both actually, there is a book called Lakshmi Gandhi. Have you heard about Lakshmi Gandhi? No, Lakshmi Gandhi is a book for Indian polity. Right, buy that book. And uh, for Monday's class, um, you just read the just, uh, just read the Parliament chapter. So the chapter on Parliament. You may not understand 80% of it. It's okay. Just read and be familiar. And others also read the Parliament chapter when you come for the Monday's class. And uh, I'll tell you what books to buy. So first you can buy Paper Two book because we'll be starting from Paper Two. Right. I'll tell you the books. So anyway, fourth chapter is Union Government, PMO, Central Secretariat, etc., etc. Fifth chapter is planning. Again, one major function you do is, which is the most important planning body of India. Earlier it was planning commission. Now we have something called, so we have to study about nothing but, chapter 5 is nothing but Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog. When was Niti Aayog formed? When was Niti Aayog formed? 2017, no? 16. 15. Anyway, Modi formed it. When was the syllabus formed? 2013. That time we still had planning commission. So syllabus mentioned about all these things. Planning commission, national development council, all these things, not relevant anymore. Now they ask questions only on Niti Aayog. Chapter 5 means Niti Aayog. Syllabus is different, questions are different. So we will discuss about planning in chapter 5. Chapter 6 is state government. Chapter 7 is, so here key secretary, all these things we will discuss. Chapter 7 is District administration, role of collector, the development management, district administration, decentralization, etc. is chapter 7. 8 is we are connecting it with paper 1. This we will discuss with the paper 1. There was one chapter called personal administration. Right. Personal administration in India is called civil services. Right. So this paper 2, chapter 2. 8, which is called civil services, is nothing but personal administration in India. Personal administration in India is the chapter 8, civil services. So, what is the constitutional position, recruitment, how does it happen, code of conduct, good governance, all these things we will discuss in chapter 8. Chapter 9, we will again connect here. We will study financial administration here and we will link it with India. India's financial management, that is chapter 9. Financial management, budgeting, parliamentary procedures, accounting, auditing, CAG. What is CAG? Who is CAG? Comptroller and Auditor General. He audits things for the government. So his role, etc. is chapter 9. Chapter 10 is administrative reform. Again, we will link it with civil service. See, the civil service in the current form was formed when? After independence, in the current form, Patel only was, you know, took the initiative to form the current civil service. Is the requirements of civil service in 1947 same as 2022? Civil service have to change, right? The changes we are bringing in the civil service is called civil service reform. Civil service reforms, this is one chapter, civil service reforms. So, major administrative reforms from independence. What are the major changes which have come to the administration? Then 11 is rural development, 12 is urban development. So in rural development, we will discuss about Panjayati Raj. Villages, Panjayati Raj, 73rd Amendment. Right. And chapter 12 is urban development, where we will discuss about 74th Amendment and urban local bodies. 13th chapter is law and order, where we will discuss about basically police. Police administration in the country, how police evolved, how law, all these laws, national police, 
investigative agencies, police public relations. Basically, this chapter is nothing but policing, which is also a form of administration. And the last chapter is a masala of a lot of things, significant issues where they can ask any current affairs. Basically, even though they have mentioned few things in the syllabus, last chapter is a current affairs chapter. Anything in GS paper two can be asked here. So they have you no know, one topic, uh, significant issues, values. This is ethics. Values in public service is nothing but ethics. Regulatory commission. Regulatory commissions means regulation. I told in you no know, private sector. I told you when private sector comes, we need to monitor them. So we have regulatory bodies like RBI, TRI, Telecom Regulatory Authority, Competition Commission, SEBI. All these are regulatory bodies. Then NHRC. What is NHRC? Human Rights Commission. This is again formed by the Parliament to deal with human rights in the country. Again, this is all in GS. Problems of administration, coalition. What is coalition? Coalition means lot of parties coming together and forming the government. So, when the syllabus was formed in 2013, who was the Prime Minister? Manmohan Singh. And India was ruled by a coalition. From 1989 to 2014, India was ruled by coalition. But for the last 10 years, India is ruled by single party. Again, this is not very relevant, but questions can come on administration in a single party government. Coalition is no longer relevant. Citizen administration interface, corruption, again, ethics, disaster management. This is again there in your GS paper 3. Disaster management is there in your GS paper 3. In the bar also, we will discuss disaster management because, why we have to study disaster management? Because, hmm. Avoid problems. Disaster is going to be a problem. Why? That's not good. Why is that? Disaster is going to be a problem. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Who are appointed? Who are appointed? As? As? District Collector is the head of Disa District Disaster Management Authority, DDMA. District or district till disaster annal, that is complete uttar vadhita markana. District Collector na uh, There is a uh, troll in the IA circle that district collectors eagerly wait for disasters to come. Appala na minute to roll galikya matcholo. And this vella pakka maine, all of them, abhi daayo, abhi daayo, abhi daayo. Alenge lor vella pakka maine Alkal IS officers, you know, will they will carry people in their shoulders and go, uh, but, um, Babu, Babu, Maleda Moli carry plan out the collector and not there. Can a collector out of them or someone die? Covid on the pump. Every day people looked into the collector stage. It's a very positive eye, it's a very negative eye because it was a disaster. So, disaster management is where you actually come in more contact with the people, even though district collector stage is there. When do people visit district collector's page? So again, uh, it is a joke, but this disaster is one area where district collector has to play a very important role. You are the head of the district disaster management authority. So we will discuss disaster management here also. Coming to books. Aurora Goel. This is a good book. So again, paper 2 is mostly current affairs oriented. But still, there are certain topics you have to read and study. How the cabinet secretariat evolved. Jawaharlal Nehru and the cabinet secretary thought, Narendra Modi the cabinet secretary vare aara nariyanam, how they performed. You should know how they performed. You should know the cabinet secretaries. All these things. There is cabinet secretariat. There is another person called the principal secretary. Who is principal secretary? There are two key positions in the central government. One is called cabinet secretary. Who is cabinet secretary? Who is chief secretary? Head of civil service in the state. So who is cabinet secretary? Head of civil service in the country. You know, he is the senior most civil service of the entire country. He will serve the union government. Principal secretary is the head of CMO. What is CMO? Prime Minister's office. He is kind of the secretary to the Prime Minister is a very powerful IS officer. He might not be the senior most IS officer, but he is a very powerful IS officer who is generally picked by the Prime Minister. 
right there are two power centers one is the cabinet secretary other is the principal secretary there can be tussles between them that is also possible so all these things you have to read for this aurora and goel will help aurora and goel will help basics of polity you can obviously read from lakshmikan you can use lakshmikan to understand constitution you have to study so just like you have you study constitution for gs2 you have to use constitution in sabat paper 2 also because it is ultimately dealing with the society then aribam is there for paper 2 also but paper 2 i feel you can directly read arora goel manasilakan buddhimutto onnum illa arora goel vaichal basically kadagal aanu arora goel mulle this lakshmikan is basically only constitution arora goel looks like a story how all the things how did mehru deal with civil service how did mora uh, indira gandhi deal with civil service all the stories you can read in arora goel then aribam is there then there is something called art what is art administrative reform commission right to reform administration india had created two arc administrative so first arc was created in 1965 which we call arc 1 and second arc was created in 2005 which we call arc 2 second arc right so from 2005 to 2009 they have submitted 15 reports on different aspects of administration right first report is called all is on rti what is that a right to information the master key to good governance that is the first report and i think the 15th report is on um, district administration i assume so there are 15 reports of arc these reports are important in our paper 2 as well as your gs2 gs2 in english all reports are important fourth example fourth report fourth report is called ethics in governance arc report 4 is called ethics in governance this report will help you in even in your gs4 ethics right you can read this report for your gs4 also so this will happen so arc reports then <coughs> there are these magazines called yojana kurukshetra have you heard about them who publishes it government publication division of the government publishes it so yojana kurukshetra ada benefit or yojana nu arnjal or issue one yojana will deal with one issue right so you can re, you will get a lot of examples from yojana kurukshetra is exclusively dealing with kurukshetra exclusively deals with rural development kurukshetra is a magazine on rural development because you are a public administration student rural development is important so don't spend too much time i think yojana and kurukshetra is available in the uh, library you know so take a yojana glance through it Con- uh, yojana will help you in even your gs answers right collect examples from yojana and kurukshetra for pabat perspective and gs perspective last note niti ayog another body so again as i told in the gs classes follow the twitter handles of these uh, ministries ministries niti ayog etc what they update you you will immediately know through the twitter handle right this is the only apart from telegram this is the only social media i will recommend to to use in the upsc corporation twitter and telegram and then uh, class notes obviously class notes class notes of paper 2 uh, more than club because paper 2 is not a class note oriented paper it is a current affairs oriented paper even if i give you a lot of class notes you have to update current affairs so paper reading is mandatory for paper 2 newspaper reading will help you in writing paper 2 answers so this is the orientation you have for public administration now you can decide whether you want to choose public administration or any other option of upsc it is up to you but again what are the challenges of public administration right the fundamental and only challenge i will tell is answer writing right they will not ask you questions like uh, what are the contributions of wilson then all is done university you they will ask here they, it is not a direct question so there is one line in the syllabus called meaning scope and significance right there is one line in the first chapter there was a line called meaning scope and significance you can have a lot of applied questions from that part what is the meaning of public administration how can analyze it in life now content will be same 
you have one meaning one scope and it can be discussed it how you understand the question and answer the question is the challenge that you will do we will understand if you answer the last 10 years question that which we will do in the class we will discuss the question so when you and right answers to pyq you will understand how to attempt questions for that we have to right answers this is the only challenge but once you are done with the bad question gs questions will be a cake walk just gs questions are straight forward questions there is no difficulty in understanding gs questions the bad questions you need understanding of question which we'll deal we'll discuss so you don't have to worry about answering questions writing answers for so, about is very difficult i saw the question paper nothing i did even did, i did not even understand the english of the question paper don't tell me all the things right so questions will be applied a little bit the terms because it is a it, even though it is a humanity subject there are certain things which are technical in babad right we will discuss all these things and uh, and it's up to so what, our plan is like next week we'll start we'll have three classes monday tuesday wednesday after that we'll probably break for a week and then after the second batch come you no know, they their classes starting our classes starting on 19th no so maybe two days after that we'll resume next week we'll just start the paper 2 right so uh, we'll for, i'll uh, ask them to form a uh, if you have decided that you are joining public administration fill the forms and join so whoever join they will form a whatsapp group of public administration and there i'll tell you what is the chapter i'm starting on monday right we'll start with this first chap first day again it is like i'll discuss the syllabus in a little more detail right we'll just go into a little more detail of the syllabus what every now i've just uh, ran through the syllabus no first day we'll deeply discuss because syllabus is extremely important you have to understand the syllabus then we will second day onwards we'll start with the paper two. so what we are discussing we'll analyze on monday so next class will be our generally our class timing will be monday to friday 5:30 to 8 that will be the optional class timing uh if at all we need uh, any special class towards the end we might take saturday saturday or sunday generally you won't it won't be there which is we can comfortably finish it from 5:30 to 8 so uh, almost 4 months will be the class duration so july july you don't need not consider fully because will be having only few classes august september october november in between onam will come vishu will come ramtan will come that holidays if you count maybe one more two more weeks it will extend right so that is the course plan we'll have uh, around 90 classes will be there you know 90 if you are taking two and a half hours it will stretch 100 classes 100 plus classes will be there that is how 40 uh, i mean four months every month approximately 20 classes we might get right in that case five months four to five months classes will be there So this is the course plan. We will cover the whole syllabus. Don't worry, every everything in the syllabus will be covered, and then we will focus on the answer writing. In the class, we'll this uh, we will have class test, so it, it will be there. And after the prelims, we will have a proper test series also. So all these things you can do after the prelims. Uh, you know, 